Alright, it's time for another math. Easy. So we're going to discuss part two of the, my little quick series on finding the period of trigonomic functions. And you can see the part one earlier video. I went through these examples uh, in depth and basically went really slowly on these. You can see this one for a better overview on this. So I'm, I'm just going to go a bit harder examples and do these two examples in this video right now. Okay, so if I write down this function here, example 3 base y equals to 8 cos times 3x times sine of uh, 1, or 1 over 2x here. Remember, the first thing we have to do is basically just find the periods of the, the two functions that are combined in this in this uh, main function here. So what we do is find a period for this one, we'll call this 1, this 2. And, uh, and I showed before, if you were to look at, basically, let's look at the function cos x here. Yeah, so if we just look at the function cos x here, you, uh, I showed my earlier video, this is just a period is going to be... 2 pi this goes like this so we'll just go p is equal to 2 pi here and now if we were to look at this 8 cos uh, 3x here this 8 doesn't affect the period it, it just makes it either higher or lower so all it does is is uh, extend it up here so it would be something like this etc here the, the period will not change you can see my earlier video in the video links below on this so i'm not going to go too in depth into that so now all we have to do is see what the period would be with this 3x here so now if we want to find out what the period of this cos 3x is, we have to find out what the equivalent x value is at here. So this is the period for cos x, it's going to be 2 pi. So what va what value of x for this new function are we going to get 2 pi here? Yeah, so we need the equivalent x value to basically obtain this cos 2 pi here, which is the values 1 here. So what we do is just, just set them equal to each other. Yeah, that's uh, basically cos 3x equals to cos 2 pi. And it's only true if the insides are equal, so we've got 3x equal to 2 pi here. And if we rearrange it, we're going to have x equal to 2 pi over 3 here. So this is less than 2 pi. So what it means is we've actually divided this by 3. And so if I just graph this cos 3x in red here, and I will just, so all we're doing is shifting it now. So instead of getting to the uh, 2 pi here, so now we have an equivalent value of somewhere around here. So this is going to be the new value. And this, this red is cos 3x here. So now we have the equivalent value at this value right here, 2 pi over 3 here. And and so basically, this, this all we're doing is squeezing it over here. So this is how it would look like. Then once we multiply by 8, everything just gets extended up or down, but the period doesn't change. Uh, and so now we have this period. Yeah, this, so this is the new period. And we'll call this P1 for that function first. And now if we look at the function sine of 1 over 2x, we could do the exact same thing as above, because we know that the period for sine of x yeah, it has a period of 2 pi, so then if we do the uh, the same thing as above, the finding the equivalent x value, we're going to get sine of 1 over 2x is equal to yeah, sine of 2 pi, and then if we rearrange this, we're going to, oh, or just uh, make the insides equal to each other, that's the only way this is true, 2 pi, then we're going to have x is equal to 4 pi here, so this is the period for the for this graph right here for this function sine 1 over 2 x and we'll call this p2 or period 2 yeah now this is going to be 4 pi here now i showed in my earlier video on uh, part one of this that I, I showed that the period of the combined or p1 plus 2 it, it has to be a multiple of both of these functions um, on both of these periods yeah of both the periods or of yeah, m multiple of this 2 pi over 3 and this 4 pi here so if we just multiply this one here by, let's say, times, yeah, this one is a multiple of 4 pi, so if you just multiply this by 6, we're going to get 2 pi over 3 times by 6, this is going to be a 2, so this will be a 4 pi here. And this one, all we do is multiply by 1 here. So basically, 4 pi, just from my earlier video, I showed that this is the period for the combined stuff. Yeah, thus this function, 8 cos 3x sine 1 over 2x has a period of 4 pi, and you could even prove this by graphing it. And so if you graph this one right here, this is that same function, as, as you can see, it, it has a period. So it goes something like this, goes up, down, goes up, and then you have you see this little turn here? This isn't the period, because this is opposite. This one is down, where this is up. So you can see where it's up again, and that's right here, and that's, and then as you can see at this point here, is the same thing as here. So this is going to be 4 pi, because you know 2 pi is, uh, is somewhere around here 6.28 so this should be 12.4 uh, or something like that I'm not sure but anyways it should be something like that and now if you were to graph the 8 cos 3x and the sine x uh, the half there as you can see here this yellow is the sine x over 2 as you can see it's going uh, it's going like this and and the first time it starts repeating the function uh, this 8 cos 3x repeats six times here so it goes up down goes up down up down until they both repeat at the exact same time and that's 
at this point right here because while it's going up and down this one hasn't repeated yet and then at this exact same time that's what I mean by it has to be multiple of it so basically they both repeat at the exact same time and that means the function the main function a com combination of it repeats at the exact same time as well yeah and for your reference if you want to download these notes or whatnot I, I just paste copy and paste that that graph right right here and, and as you see there's the period right here because it goes down and up and this this looks exactly I mean I mean the periods right here actually yeah right there as you see it's exact same thing it looks the same thing here that's when it's, they both start repeating and period is 4 pi okay, so now if we look at the uh, the second example for today example 4 y equals 3 tan 2 x sine of x now this one, uh, the first we have to do is find that they do exact same as above, just, just split them up into two functions and find the period, this one P1 and P2, and then just find the constant or just find the multiple of it and you can find the period of the combined one here. And we know, now if we look at tan x first, yeah, if you were to graph this function here, this was just tan of x right now, just to see what the period is, you can see my earlier video as well, this is how tan looks like in the period or when it starts repeating is basically well, we could just look at any points that are sort of repeating and you could go from let's say here to here and this one here is just going to be well just pi so period is equal to pi right here and now doing the exact same thing as above for this one here we find the equivalent x value to get tan of uh, let's say yeah just tan of pi yeah so we just find the equivalent value to get the period here because if we know the period is pi for the tan of x, and now, now this, is, this just means the inside is going to be like that. So we're going to have 2x equals pi, and x is going to equal to, to pi over 2. So this is the new period. So remember, every time it's, uh, it's something like this, if it's divided by, you're going to have an increase of period. If it's, if it's something like this, you're going to shrink it here. And then everything is going to get shrunk, and we're going to have two, uh, two periods for, for just one period here. So we're going to have a period of pi over 2 for this new function here. We'll call this p1 is equal to pi over 2 and now if we look at the other function in this the other part sine of x like I showed above and you can also see video link on sine of x the graph etc this is this just has a period we'll call p2 of this is going to be of 2 pi right here and now right away we know that the mul multiple of this one we're just going to get well p1 plus p2 that's the combined period it's gonna, it has to be 2 pi because this one just multiply this by by 2 and this one multiplied by 1 and so then this one is a multiple of both of these uh, it is an integer multiple of both of these uh, periods here so this is what the period should be Yeah, you know, thus this function a tan 2x sine x has a period of 2 pi here and if we graph it to prove it as well we're gonna, we'll get the same thing yeah, so if we look at how this function looks like it's kind of messed up this 3 tan 2x for graph with Google it goes out this is something like this and then you have asymptotes that looks like a weird wave like this one and it goes down then this goes like this and then then it starts repeating itself this is the exact same pattern as this one right here and that's at this is 6.28 which is the period which I just uh, just showed which is supposed to be 2 pi here because uh, number pi is 3.14 times by 2 6.28 etc and now uh, now I just copied and pasted that same graph here just to also for your reference if you end up downloading these notes for future notes etc and as you can see it's uh, at this point right here looks exactly like this point right here you got this going down this going down then you got a line going up a line going up and you have this parabola going up so then this is the period of 2 pi here equals let's call period here and now, well, that's all for today. Hopefully, learn about these uh, about finding the period of trig functions. It's pretty straightforward and easy, and it's uh, and it's really useful because all you need to know is just how the graph looks like in this interval, in wherever the period is, and then you could just uh, do the exact same thing for every single interval on, on the right or left. It's going to look exactly the same. So all you need to do is find out what the what it looks like in its period. Well, that's all for today, uh, and uh, remember you can always get download these notes in the Dropbox link below, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.